Hey, Randy Hunter here, and I just wanted to let you know about a new Quick Tunes set of lessons that I've just added to my website, beginningsax.com. Now, if you're familiar with my lessons, you may already know that I have a subscription site, randyhunterjazz.vhx.tv, where I add lessons as I create them, so uh, that always has my newest content. You can subscribe for a reasonable monthly rate, and at beginningsax.com, once I get a collection of lessons that I'm happy with, I post them for sale there so you can purchase my lessons there. Now Quick Tunes Set 5 includes lessons on how to solo on Stolen Moments. Now when I say Stolen Moments you might think of Oliver Nelson's tune Stolen Moments and that's really what inspired this lesson but when you improvise on Stolen Moments you're improvising on a minor blues. So the lesson is really how to improvise on a minor blues. That's one of the lessons. The Another one is on Days of Wine and Roses. And again, we're not really learning to play the melody in these quick tunes lessons. We're just learning to improvise on them. And the third lesson in set number five is on Here's That Rainy Day. Now, all of the lessons include things like written PDF, you know, so the written components from the lesson are included. Maybe not a whole lot of instruction in the PDF. Maybe in some of them just graphics that I include in the videos and others may have uh, may have a little bit more in-depth instruction in the PDF. But that's really on only as a reference for after you watch the instructional video because there's an instructional video for each one of the lessons and uh, it covers things like um, understanding the chord progression, the basics of the vocabulary used to improvise, and even uh, things like phrasing suggestions on how to assemble and create your solo. I try to make the lessons kind of unique for each tune because I know that we don't want to have a cookie cutter mold that we use for improvising on every tune. There, there are different ways that you might approach different tunes. So I try to approach the lessons from whatever standpoint or whatever viewpoint I might take as far as how I would solo on that tune. Now, there's also a phrasing demonstration that comes with the downloads for each um, for each tune. So um, you may hear some of the melodies. You may uh, you may not. I didn't play the melody to stolen, stolen moments. I just um, you know I improvised on it. So um, either way, you really are just learning to improvise on these tunes. Now you were just listening at the beginning of this video to part of the phrasing demonstration from the lesson on days of wine and roses. So uh, keep that in mind. The play along tracks are fun to play with. I try to create them at tempos that are very reasonable for you to work with. Now um, in this set, remember there are lessons on minor blues, stolen moments, minor blues, days of wine and roses, and here's that rainy day. So let's just take a quick peek at some of, you know, some excerpts from each one of those lessons. And I'm going to keep this fairly brief. Now, personally, as I practice, one of the things I like to do is start with basic vocabulary as I'm learning a tune um, or learning a chord progression, whatever. I like to start with basic vocabulary and layer in complexities with the vocabulary as I get comfortable with the harmony, you know, with, uh, with things, the, you know, the movement of the changes, the timing of the changes, the feel, all of these things, because I always like to make put phrasing first and if I'm concentrating wholeheartedly on vocabulary it's hard for me to think about phrasing. So I would say spend your time working with those arpeggios until you really get comf comfortable and confident enough with them that you're able to kind of tell a musical story. And then the next uh, most logical aspect of the vocabulary to add to your, um, to your, um, to your playing would be perhaps pentatonic scales. So I've got the pentatonic scales here for you. Our first one is D minor, the minor pentatonic. Very melodic sounding scale. The G minor pentatonic or the four chord pentatonic, you know, remember you've got your transpositions there. Back to the one chord pentatonic. Now here's one that you may or may not be familiar with. A lot of people are familiar with basic major and minor pentatonics, but the half diminished pentatonic uses the root, the third, fourth, flatted fifth, 
and the minor seven, just kind of like the minor pentatonic that uses the one, the minor three, four, five, the minor seven, and the eight. The half diminished pentatonic or the minor seven flat five pentatonic uses the same notes except with a flatted five. <laughs> The dominant flat nine pentatonic, root, flat nine, third, fifth, minor seven, eight. Minor pentatonic for the one chord. And then, of course, your five chord pentatonic again. So, for starters, you know, make sure you get the pentatonics in hand at first, but then put on the track and work through it a number of times, kind of like I'm about to do. I'm going to put on the track. I'm going to play just the scales the first time around, and the second time around, I'm going to improvise a little bit, still sticking primarily with the scales, you know, just sticking, well, exclusively with these pentatonic scales, but I'm going to try to make them very obvious to you, and I'm still going to be working with the four bar phrases, so I'll probably put a pause at the end of each uh, at the end of each phrase so that you can hear when I'm going from one phrase to the next. Okay? Dig this. Now, you know, The Days of Wine and Roses is just one of my all-time favorite tunes. It's just got such a beautiful melody. The chord progression really lends itself to expressive and melodic soloing. Plus, you know, it uh, also lends itself towards some advanced soloing concepts that we won't cover in this lesson. But just for your information, there are just tons of things that you can do on this chord progression to Days of Wine and Roses. I love the tempo that it's usually performed at, usually kind of a medium tempo. And that's the tempo of our play-along track. And the words... The days of wine and roses, laugh and run away like a child at play, um, etc. I'm not going to recite the whole lyric to you. You can um, listen to some great versions of it. And, um, of course, you can do your research and find the lyrics and learn the lyrics. That will really help you learn how to interpret the melody in a manner that represents the style and feel of the tune. Now, um, I think in this lesson, the approach we're going to take will be to kind of look over the chord progression as we learn how to play it. You know, a lot of times we, in these quick tunes lessons and in my soloing on tunes lessons, I have kind of like a theory section before we go through the chord progression. And um, But right now I think what we'll do is make some quick observations. You know, the most important things, things like um, the key signature, it's in um, F concert on tenor sax. We're in G, and by the way, you know, I'll speak in tenor sax key, but I'll have your transpositions. Um, hopefully everything on the screen as we go along, and, and if not, you know, there's, there'll be a download that'll have everything transposed for alto saxophone and concert pitch instruments. So, once again, we're in the key of F concert, G on tenor sax. Now, I've given you some ideas for uh, creating your solos, for practicing your changes, those sorts of things. Let me just blow a chorus straight through, and I'll, uh, I'll do this with the play-along track so that you can kind of hear how all this can be put together. And I'm just going to stick 
primarily with the ideas that I've shown you. You might hear a little rhythmic variation. You might hear a couple of traveling notes that take me to those ideas, but I'm going to try to make this interesting, melodic, musical, and logical according to the things that you've worked with. And then, of course, you take this to the practice room and enjoy practicing this tune because it's such a wonderful tune. So I've been wanting to do one of these quick tunes lessons on Here's That Rainy Day for quite a while. And, um... Our home tonal center, again, of A major. So we've done some very interesting things. We started in A major. We went to F major, on back to A major. The B section, C major, then back to A major. Then we've got the A section again, A2, A major to F major, back to A major, and then our C section, D major, with some turnaround kind of movements, two, five, three, six, five of five, two, five, to our A major tonal center again. Now, one of the things I like about analyzing the chord progressions to tunes like we just did is that it helps me remember the tune. It helps me make a connection with the tune, helps me memorize the tune, and in some cases, it even helps me relate one tune to other tunes that have similar movements. Now, this tune has some fairly unique movements. I mean, one movement that does come to mind um, that, I'm, that I might lodge in my brain is that first movement down a major third is reminiscent of a giant steps kind of movement from Coltrane's tune giant steps. Now I'm not in any way equating here's that rainy day with giant steps but you know when you have chord tonal centers that move in major thirds that automatically comes to mind. So does I mean the seven on the G7 chord is the F it pulls down to the E. So, you know, things brighten up a little bit when we actually land on the C major as opposed to what would have occurred if we landed on A minor. And then we're back into some, um, some traditional movements within the key. So, uh, you can follow the example through um, this, uh, this written out in the written lesson, or what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to put on the track and I'm going to play the entire chorus and I'm going to bring out these movements. So you might not hear everything that's written, but I've tried to write again some of the some of the powerful movements or at least the movements that I like to highlight when I'm soloing. So take a listen as I play just the long tones through a chorus. You know, I'm not really soloing, I'm just playing these long tones and identifying this movement chord to chord in my playing. Okay?